Hey, welcome replay viewers. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to show you how to formulate a great soap recipe today. Hey there, guys. How are you? Hi, I'm Marla Bosworth from Backport Soap. Hope you're doing well today. I'm going to show you how to formulate a great soap recipe. Have you guys ever made soap before? Thank you for joining me. I have an earlier scope from today about how, uh, what ingredients and what supplies you need to make soap. So now I'm going to show you a great software program. Thanks for the hearts, guys. Um, all right, so let me show you my computer. This is a website called... Hi there. How are you? Thanks for joining me. Good to see you, MC. I enjoyed your scopes from uh, last night. It was last night. <laughs> um, okay, so this is soapcalc.net is the website. And there are other websites you can use to figure out recipes, but this is just one I'm going to show you um, because I find it very easy to, to use. It's just one of my favorites. So what you need to do in the very beginning is determine how big of a recipe that you want to make. And so the one that we're doing today is, is going to fit one of these. This size. This will get you about eight bars of soap, four ounce bars, um, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, so for that container, we need about, oh, sorry, I don't know why it's so, um, it's not focusing, is it? Ooh, is that blurry for you guys? Maybe I'm too close. Ah, that's better, I think, right? Okay, so what we need first, I'm just going to put my cursor over here so you can see it. Uh, NaOH, we're using sodium hydroxide. Hodium, <laughs> I need some coffee. Sodium hydroxide, so you click on this one right here. I think it defaults to it automatically. Okay, then we want to come over here, and um, today we're working in ounces. You can work in pounds and grams if you want, but we need 32 ounces of oil to fill this mold that I just showed you for about eight bars, maybe about five ounces total. Okay, I have to stop going back and forth. It's uh, kind of weirding out on me here. Okay, and then water, just leave the water portion alone and also leave the super fat alone. What the super fat is, it's going to make your soap extra moisturizing by leaving some oils in there. And um, it's kind of a long, there's a long explanation for it. I'm just gonna skip over that for now, but you can Google super fat if you want to learn more about that. But 5% is pretty standard in the industry. Fragrance, um, a half ounce per pound of soap is typical. Um, once you're using uh, essential oils, you might want to bump that up a little bit. Let me know if you guys have any questions as we go along. Okay, so the next thing we want to do that I've already done is we need to figure out a percentage of oils and butters that add up to 100%. And this is what I wish somebody would have told me when I first started soap making 20 years ago when the internet really wasn't um, where it is now. I wish somebody would have explained to me why we use the oils and butters that we do. So the first the first oil that you want to use for soap making, I suggest, is coconut oil because it's really it helps with the lather in the soap. So coconut oil, I use up to 30%. And so I've, I've put this in here by just coming down here, double clicking on it, and, and it'll add the type of oil and butter you want to use. And then you have to manually put in what percentage. So it does require some knowledge from, from you. And that's what I'm hoping to convey today. So 30% coconut oil. Shea butter is fabulous because it's conditioning. If you've ever used a shea butter soap, it's just so luxurious and leaves the skin really feeling nice and moisturized. I use I typically use my butters, it could be cocoa butter, shea butter, whatever, at 15%. Then the rest of, and again, we're looking for 100%. I use olive oil. You could use rice bran instead. You could use sunflower oil. Um, any sort of a liquid oil here at about 50%. And then castor oil at 5%. Castor oil gives you this really luxurious lather that's um, just super um, small bubbles, but feels really, really luxurious. 
Coconut oil, on the other hand, gives large bubbles, but lots of lather too. So we scroll down here, we say calculate recipe. If you've messed up anywhere along here, it will correct you and tell you how many, uh, how many percentages to adjust to. Once we do that, we hit view or print recipe. And then that's going to bring up our customized recipe that we just put in here. And I'll put um, Marla's recipe. And then you can print this out. The, the website won't store it for you, but you can just, you know, print it out on, and uh, put it in a binder and keep all your soap recipes in there, which is helpful. So, uh, so what we know from adding in the oils and butters at the percentages that we said, and also telling the calculator that we want to use 32 ounces of oil, the helpful information that it's given us now is how much water do we use, how much sodium hydroxide or lye, and then how much fragrance can we add? Okay, so these are just guidelines. And the lye really, you know, you need to be pretty on target with the amount of lye that you weigh out for it. The water can fluctuate slightly, as can the fragrance. So what we need is 12.16 ounces of water, 4.5 of lye, 32 ounces of oils, and one ounce of fragrance. And that can be essential oils or fragrance oils, which are synthetic and man-made. So just be really careful if you decide to use this recipe um, and check out my previous scope if you can. And, you know, it's really important to suit up <laughs> um, by wearing goggles and gloves and a mask and be very careful when you're using the sodium hydroxide Use it in a well-ventilated area with no children around, no pets around, because it can be, um, it can burn you. So you have to be really careful with it. And then once your soap starts to saponify, um, about, I would say about 24, 48 hours after you make the soap, the, the pH is going to drop from about 14, 12 or 14 down to mm, maybe an eight and a half or nine. So it feels good on the skin. So after you make this recipe, you pour it into a mold, whatever you choose for your mold, and let it sit for 24 hours. Then you want to unmold it, cut it into bars, and let it cure for four weeks. Somewhere where, you know, somewhere, um, doesn't have to be a dark place, but maybe on a shelf somewhere. And uh, after four weeks, then your soap will be ready to use. Um, so let me know if you have any questions on that. It's really, um, it's really a good little program here that um, that's on the internet. Super easy to use, and you just have to know what oils and butters you want to use and how much of it, and that's basically all that you tell it. And then once you click out of here, it's gone. It'll still remain here um, until you click out of this. But I hope that was helpful for you, and. Um, no questions. So just to recap, it's soapcalc.net and type of lye, sodium hydroxide, weight of oils, we did 32 ounces. Water, we just leave it alone, let it default, and we let the super fat and fragrance default as well. And then we just come down here and choose whichever oils and butters that we want. With the percentages, we put these in ourselves to add up to 100%, as you see right here. And then after you do that, go ahead and hit Calculate Recipe, which I already did, View or Print, and voila, there's our recipe. Okay, thanks for joining me. Hope you have a great evening or afternoon or whatever. And... Uh, be sure to follow me if you are interested in formulating your own natural skincare products. I'm going to have a lot more of these scopes. And um, I'm going to put them over on my YouTube channel, Back Porch Soap. So if you missed it or if you want to replay it and it's not on Catch or uh, Periscope, you can catch it there. And that's it. All right. Thanks for joining.